I've been involved in scouting since I was six years old and had no hair. <laughs> As you can see, a lot's changed. I started my scouting career at Our Savior Lutheran, where we never went camping, and all we did was arts and crafts. I transferred to St. Ambrose in the fourth grade. My head was still bald, and uh, I joined Pac-540. I was about ready to quit scouting then, because we still had way too many arts and crafts. But luckily, my family, my granddad especially, urged me to keep going, so I reached Boy Scouts. After the Arab Light Ceremony, I was, I was excited to finally go camping. However, when the first summer camp rolled around, I was in for a big surprise. 7,000 feet above sea level and two days away from home must have been a little too much for me. The first night at Shamayo Scout Reservation, I got altitude sickness. I used that excuse along with begging my dad to try to find a way to go home. Fortunately, he didn't let me leave. And I speak on behalf of everyone who was on that summer camp and thanking Mr. Guerrero for picking the farthest camping site from just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> the next summer camp I attended was El Rancho of Sima. It was really, really peaceful until Zach Moses decided to fall off the cliff and break his back. <laughs> when they finally got Zach out of the canyon, I got to see a live flight helicopter, which is a first for me. <laughs> I got to see the inside. I got the full tour though. After El Rancho Sima came Buffalo Trails, and here I learned I actually liked horseback riding. And last, but definitely least, is Sid Richardson. This particular camp was water-based, and we got what we asked for. It rained from the time we got there to the time I left. One afternoon, we were hit with a huge thunder shower, and I went back to my camp, soaking wet, only to find my tent with a good three inches of standing water in it. That night I had to sleep with my dad in his one-man tent, and uh, this was without a doubt the worst night's sleep I'd ever had. <laughs> the day after all the rain, Mr. Ryan decided it'd be a good idea to pack up and go home. My dad, without any hesitation, asked if we could get a ride home too. Later that night, we found an amazing Motel 6, and uh, you can say they left a light on for us. Uh, but the only problem with this particular Motel 6 was their idea of a non-smoking room was an ashtray turned upside down. <laughs> These summer camps were always fun, but nothing can compare to the weekend camp outs such as the gun shoot, the uh, junkyard wars, and the boating trips. All the camp outs have taught me lifelong lessons such as self-reliance, respect for others, and appreciation for nature, and organizational and leadership skills. I'll carry these lessons with me in everything I do. When I first transferred into St. Ambrose, I really didn't know anybody, but the leaders of True 540 gave me the impression that I belonged. This family feeling I received gave me confidence, which I have found very necessary, not only in my scouting career, but in life in general. Eventually, with lots of help from the adult leaders from True 540, it was time for my Eagle Project. Mr. Brim was elected to be my mentor during the process of filling out all the paperwork and organizing the project. I planted 231 trees and six wood duck houses on Buffalo Bayou, just down the street from St. Thomas. This is necessary because Hurricane Ike wiped out much of the natural canopy there. And I really want to thank everyone who came out to help me that day, especially for the younger scouts. You guys outworked the older scouts who just sat around and did nothing all day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to send a special thanks to Mr. Guerrero for adjusting his schedule to work with me, especially in helping me with all the Eagle applications. We were almost perfect. Mr. Brown, you were also a vital part in helping me attain the rank of Eagle. And to all assistant scoutmasters, I'd like to thank you for the hard and sometimes unnoticed work you put into the troop. But I definitely wouldn't be here today without my parents, my granddad, and my grandma who's at home, and the rest of the family. Their support was unbelievable. Lastly, I'd like to add a word of encouragement for all the younger scouts. Scouting may seem tough at times, but if you just slow things down, enjoy yourself, and take things one merit badge at a time, you'll eventually be making this speech one day, too. Thanks for this great honor. I'll strive to live up to the scout oath each and every day.